Hello and welcome to a series on PX Motion from Portworx, a new 2.0 uh, feature. This demo will focus on augmentation. So this is all about uh, moving your workloads from one Kubernetes cluster to another that may have a totally different uh, server base, OS, infrastructure, those kind of things. So first thing we're looking at here is the source cluster UI it has 11 volumes and three nodes. And the destination cluster here has one volume, uh, three nodes. So the destination cluster is built very differently um, on GKE than the first cluster. So the first thing we're gonna do on the source cluster is see what is running. Um, and here we have Cassandra, MySQL, Postgres, WordPress. So a whole bunch of staple applications. Each one of these applications have volumes. Um, shown here is the Portworx cluster we just looked at with 11 volumes, they're all in the UI as well under the volume view. You can actually go into the volume analyzer and see MySQL uh, file system structure. We can also see in PX Central, uh, our Grafana dashboards are showing that it's pretty utilized. So 70 to 100% using a lot of memory. Our destination cluster, which doesn't really have a lot on it, is using barely anything, right? 1.6 CPUs. Um, so what we want to do is move our workloads from the source cluster to the destination cluster to augment uh, that CPU usage. So we can see here we don't have a cluster pair. So the first thing we want to do is create that cluster pair to pair up our source cluster to the destination cluster so that we can actually uh, run migrations. So here we'll create the cluster pair from a spec. Um, and then we can use the stork CTL to watch the scheduler and here the storage and scheduler status is ready, uh, which means that we can kick off migrations um, to the uh, from the source cluster to the destination cluster. So here, remember, we have 11 volumes and one volume on the destination cluster. So we can see the volumes get created when we uh, kick off the migration. So we have a migration spec here. You can do it through the CLI, but there's also the spec format, which takes the name, things like what cluster pair is being used, uh, what resources, meaning Kubernetes resources, starting their applications and their replicas, uh, those kind of things, all available through the CLI, as I mentioned as well. So we can kick off the migration by uh, using kubectl to create that migration. And uh, what you can do is watch the migration as it happens. So it'll go through a few different um, stages, such as volumes first, always first, It'll go in progress to complete, and then it'll move on to applications. If you set applications, resources, uh, it'll move all those, uh, and then it'll come to a complete status. So here we can see one of them migrated. We can go over to the new cluster. It looks like a bunch of migrated. We see nine out of the 11, um, or at least eight out of the 11 have migrated to the second cluster. We can start seeing the PVCs pop up in the UI for uh, from the source cluster. And Soon the rest of them will also migrate. You can see nine, there we go, it refreshed. And then it moves on to applications. So all the volumes are now done. There's 33 resources. So these are things like replica sets and services and things like that. Um, and once applications are done, it'll go into a final stage. As you can see here, everything is status successful. Um, you can get more information using kubectl describe and things like that. Um, but what we'll do here is go to the destination cluster, make sure we use the right context for this cluster and we will get the pods in the namespace. We could see Cassandra starting up, MySQL and Postgres and WordPress are already there. Um, and we can also see that the destination cluster has all 11 volumes now migrated over to it. Um, and what this effectively does is move and augment the namespace from one cluster to another where this cluster has much more CPU available to it. So now we can see we're using about 3% CPU, 4% um, CPU, instead of the 70, 80, 90 that we were using in the first cluster. And we can decommission the first cluster, we can reuse it, um, but essentially this makes it really easy to move your workloads from one cluster to the other. Um, and this is all made possible with PX Motion, the new uh, feature in 2.0, uh, focus on data mobility. Thanks and come back for more.